Hello everyone and welcome to Grumpy's Railroad Photography Guide, episode number 11, Roster Shots. You can think of a roster shot as a builder's photograph, or perhaps a collector's image. It's something that depicts the locomotive as it originally existed at some point in history. Historically, roster shots were taken exclusively on Kodachrome film, and for good reason. Even today, you can often find Kodachrome roster shot slides for sale on eBay, and these are traded at WGRF. The most important thing about roster shots, however, is that the technique is absolutely critical. Now let's think about what's necessary in order to make a good roster shot. There are really three things we need to keep in mind. Proper composition, proper lighting, and proper subject. Let's discuss each in turn. To properly compose a roster shot, we require a three-quarter view from the front of the locomotive so that we see both part of the side of the locomotive and part of the front of the locomotive. This requires a normal focal length lens, which for a 35 millimeter camera would be approximately 50 millimeters. The photo must be taken from ground level, meaning you're not above or below the locomotive. The photo should have adequate margins on all sides, particularly on the left and right. And note that the camera must be perfectly level, not tilted to the left or to the right, and the camera back must also be vertical, not tilted upwards or downwards. And finally, composition requires a clean background whenever possible. Now let's turn to the subject of proper lighting. The correct lighting is three-quarter lighting corresponding to the view of our composition. In other words, when we're facing the front corner of the locomotive, our shadow should be pointed directly towards the locomotive and the sun should be at our back. This allows both the front and the side of the locomotive to be equally well lit. Furthermore, we require full daylight sunshine, meaning that there is no cirrus or other obstructions of the sun, the shot's not taken on a cloudy day, or anything like that. Furthermore, roster shots are never taken in early morning or late afternoon light, only during the middle of the day, and only when there is not high sun directly overhead. To determine if high sun is present, look at the shadows of the handrails along the long hood of the locomotive. If you can see the handrail shadows on the side of the long hood, then the sun is adequately positioned. However, if these shadows fall below the hood doors, then the sun is too high in the sky and roster shooting is not advised. Also, make sure that no shadows from other objects such as power poles or lines or things of that nature are falling on the subject. And now let's think about the proper subject, which will be a locomotive that is, first of all, not front coupled. Secondly, has no open doors, either on the cab or on the hood. Third, no objects are blocking the subject, such as weeds or cans or poles or other items in the foreground. Fourth, there shouldn't be any people in the photo. Finally, we would prefer that the locomotive not be rear coupled, although this isn't absolutely essential, and also, we would prefer a clean or newly painted or rare locomotive in order to be a good subject for a roster shot. Now let's look at some examples of roster shots so that we can learn the difference between good ones and bad ones. Remember, our goal here is to learn from the images. We don't want to criticize the photographer, and that's why I've left these anonymous, even though none of these photos is my own. What we really want to do here is evaluate how each roster shot matches the rules of roster shooting, and that will tell us whether this is a good roster shot or a bad roster shot. Let's take a look. Santa Fe 228 represents an example of a very nice roster shot. The only complaint that I would have here is there's ever so slightly a tilt to the left, but that's probably within acceptable limits. Otherwise, this is a really nice image. Santa Fe 2879 has a few problems. First off, there's a slight tilt to the right, although this is hardly disqualifying. The biggest problem here is that the margin on the right side is much larger than the margin on the left, and we have that locomotive over there in the foreground which casts a nasty shadow onto the long hood of the 2879. This would not be a shot that collectors would treasure. BN 6326 is a little more broadside than would be customary for a roster shot, but it's still perfectly acceptable and is quite a nice shot. There's ever so slightly a bit of right tilt in my opinion, and the background is a little bit busy, although it's far from overwhelming. 
As a bonus, this locomotive is not rear coupled and the locomotive is fairly clean, so I think we can call this a pretty nice roster shot. Here's a shot of BN 7812, a one of a kind locomotive, which is quite interesting, although this roster shot has a couple of problems. First, it looks to me to be ever so slightly overexposed, although the bigger problem is that pole shadow cast on the cab. And it's also not quite level. There's a slight right tilt here. And additionally, the light doesn't look quite like it was full sun. I think there might be some cirrus obscuring it. Other than that, it would be okay, but that pole shadow probably disqualifies it from most collections. BNSF 4371 is an example of a very nice roster shot, even though it looks a bit harsh in this view. We notice that we don't have any problems with margins. There's ever so slightly a right tilt, but it's not enough really to worry about. As a bonus, the locomotive is not front coupled or rear coupled, and it's exceptionally clean having just been delivered from the factory. So this is quite a nice shot, even though the BNSF scheme is a little bit harsh in this sort of a view, and the colors aren't quite right due to the way I digitized this image. BNSF 9804 is an example of an excellent roster shot. There's really nothing to complain about here at all. It is a little bit dark, but that's because the paint on these locomotives was quite dark. The exposure here is correct, as are most of the other aspects of this image. Baltimore and Ohio 4252 has ever so slight of a left tilt to it, but other than that is a pretty decent image. The wires are a bit annoying, but they're probably acceptable given that there wouldn't be much that we could do about that. Also note that the light here is a little more broadside than we would prefer. Since you look at the front of the cab, it's a bit darker than maybe we would like. As a bonus, the locomotive is very clean, and overall this is a pretty decent shot. Council Bluffs 992 is a pretty nice image. We note that we have ever so slight of a right tilt, but other than that, there's really no problems here. As a bonus, the locomotive is not rear coupled, and the background is relatively clean. Q369 has ever so slight of a left tilt to it, and it does look a little bit washed out, but that's because this film is fairly old. The wires and the poles are annoying, but probably acceptable, and although the locomotive is dirty, it's still interesting just due to its age. Generally, I think this is a pretty decent shot. CNW4412 has a myriad of problems. First, there's a very heavy left tilt, as you can see, that makes the locomotive look like it's falling over. The slide also appears to me to be slightly overexposed, but within acceptable limits. The biggest annoyance, in my opinion, is that bush or whatever it is in the foreground that's blocking out the fuel tank as well as part of the trucks. Further degrading this image is the fact that the locomotive is filthy dirty. As a bonus, however, it's not rear coupled. Also note that there is a shadow that's somewhat difficult to see just in front of the radiator grill on the low part of the long hood that also detracts from the quality of this image. CNW5525 is generally a very nice shot. It's slightly broadside lit, as you can tell by the dark front of the locomotive cab. But other than that, it's a pretty nice photo. This view of Conrail 6300, which although is an interesting locomotive, has quite a few problems. First of all, we're too low to the ground and we're looking up, emphasizing the trucks and the underframe more than we would prefer. Secondly, the margins here are very tight, especially on the left side, where the rear of the locomotive is cut off. Also note that there's a strong left tilt here, and there's also a slight upward tilt due to the fact that we're very low to the ground. Furthermore, the background is extremely busy and I don't like the way that overpass cuts right through the locomotive. And finally, this image is almost backlit, as you can tell by the dark front of the cab and battery box and signal box there. And one final complaint would be the switch stand in the foreground blocking part of the rear truck of the locomotive. Overall, I think this is an example of what not to do when shooting roster shots. Rock Island 1292, while not the cleanest locomotive in the world, represents a mostly good roster shot. The only complaints that I really have are that the cab door is open, the locomotive is dirty. But other than that, the bonus is that the locomotive is not rear coupled and the background, while a little bit busy, really isn't all that bad. Rock Island 3004 is a roster shot that has some problems. First of all, there's a little bit of right tilt, probably to the point where it's objectionable. Secondly, the left margin is way too tight. We're almost cutting into the plow there. 
The biggest sin, however, is the fact that it appears that it's a mostly cloudy day and what little of the sun there is is directly overhead as can be evidenced from the fairly weak shadows that are still nonetheless visible. Overall, I'd say that the problem here was mostly due to the lighting, but the composition leaves a bit to be desired as well. CSX 5817 has a few problems. First, there's a little bit of right tilt, which I would probably object to. Secondly, the light is almost backlit here. As you can see, the front of the cab is almost completely black and obscured. Furthermore, by looking at the handrail shadows on the long hood and noticing that they don't exist, we can conclude that this was taken during high sun. The final problem is that open cab door on the rear of the cab that we can see in this view. GECX 8001 illustrates a few problems with lighting. First of all, the direction of the sun is almost nose on. Secondly, the sun is very high overhead and we don't have any shadows from the handrails falling on the long hood of the locomotive like we should if the lighting were correct. I also think this slide is ever so slightly overexposed even though the trucks and the underframe are so black that they're barely visible. Finally, there's the issue of that open cab door that would cause this to not be really valued by most collectors. Milwaukee 183 would be a nice roster shot if the sun were out and in the correct position. The biggest problem here is the fact that this roster shot was taken on a cloudy day and as such the lighting is unacceptable for roster shooting. I'm also not thrilled with that telephone pole that's growing out of the top of the cab. Perhaps a different composition might have minimized that effect. Mopac 1559 is an example of a very nice roster shot. We notice that there's ever so slightly a left tilt, but it's well within acceptable limits. Likewise, the wires in the background are annoying, but acceptable no less. There's also the issue that this is slightly side lit, but it's still within acceptable limits. Frisco 807 is a very nice roster shot. It follows all the rules of roster photography quite well. The only minor complaint might be the busy background with the trees and the wires, but there's nothing that could be done about that and it really doesn't spoil the image. I think this is a pretty good example of a decent roster shot. Southern Pacific 8360 is perhaps the best roster shot that I'm showing in this series. This is an example of an excellent roster shot where everything is exactly the way we would like it to be. Notice the three-quarter view, the three-quarter lighting, the fact that the paint is factory fresh, the fact that the background is clean. There's no front coupling or back coupling. There's no high sun. There's nothing in the foreground. Everything is just exactly the way you would want it in a roster shot. So I would urge you to study this image and notice all of its qualities because this is what one should strive for when trying to shoot roster shots. Cotton Belt 9673 has a few problems. First of all, it's mostly nose lit meaning that the sun angle is too head-on for proper roster shooting here. Additionally, the sun appears to be fairly high in the sky, and in any event, we can't see any shadows from the handrails that fall on the long hood of the locomotive, which is always our telltale sign that the lighting is correct. We don't have that here. Additionally, we've got some weeds in the foreground that are blocking part of the front truck and the fuel tank, and then there's the final problem that this locomotive is somewhat dirty. I don't believe that this would be a photo that most collectors would seek. UP-168 is a very nice roster shot. There's a slight tilt to the right, but it's within acceptable limits. As a bonus, the locomotive is not rear coupled, and although there are some locomotives in the background, they really don't cause too much of a distraction, and the locomotive is pretty clean, and it's an interesting subject. UP-204B, while an interesting locomotive, presents a number of problems in this roster shot view that we have here. For starters, I believe that we're shooting this from the wrong end. The front of the locomotive would be the opposite end, the one in the background, and this would be the rear of the locomotive that we're looking at here in this view. In general, roster shots should be taken from the front three-quarter of the locomotive and not the rear three-quarter. However, there are other problems even if we didn't mind having a shot from the rear of the locomotive. For one thing, there's a pole shadow falling right across the middle of the locomotive that pretty much ruins this image as far as I'm concerned. Secondly, there's a heavy right tilt here from the camera not being level left to right. Also note that this locomotive is coupled on both ends, which is a big no-no for roster shooting. And then finally, there's that pole from the light just to the left of the locomotive that irritates me for some reason. A different composition could have easily removed that, but that's a minor annoyance in comparison to the rest of the problems that we see here. Wisconsin Central 6655 is an interesting locomotive, but this is not a particularly good roster shot of that locomotive. 
The primary problem here is lighting. It's almost cloudy. There's only the slightest hint of shadows from the handrails, which indicates to us that there's a heavy presence of cloud cover. Also annoying is the fact that the locomotive is front coupled. There's a ever so slight of a right tilt present, but that's hardly our greatest worry. Additionally, I'm not crazy about those signals growing out of the roof, although again, that's a minor problem here. Most of the problems on this center with the fact that it's front coupled and it was taken on a cloudy day, which is something that you should never do when shooting roster shots. So what have we learned? If we want to take good roster shots, we have to learn the rules of roster shooting. And secondly, we have to follow those rules religiously. Admittedly, roster shooting is very difficult these days because it's very hard to find a locomotive that's suitable to shoot roster shots of. And the added security since 9-11 makes trespassing in railroad facilities very unwise. It is interesting, at least to me, that 20 years after the death of film, there are still a few roster shooters who shoot film exclusively and are successfully selling roster shots on eBay. My advice would be, if you can't take roster shots yourself, maybe you're better off just buying them from someone else who does take good roster shots. That's mostly what I do. I hope this video has been helpful to you in understanding the rules of roster shooting and being able to understand the difference between a good roster shot and a bad roster shot. Hopefully I've made it clear that roster shooters are a very picky bunch and people that collect roster shots are likewise very picky. If you're going to play in this crowd, you're going to need to learn the rules and follow them religiously. That said, if all you want to do is capture an image of a locomotive or a freight car to use for modeling purposes, say, to figure out where details belong or where the lettering should be placed or what a piece of graffiti looks like, then there really are no rules and you can do whatever you want. Just don't expect people to ooh and ah and think that you're a great roster shooter unless you follow the rules presented here and have learned the difference between good roster shots and bad roster shots.